Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Kevin. Uh, today is Friday, the 20th of March, 2020. First day of spring. So I don't know what spring means for you. Um, for me, it means mm, lots of new opportunities. Um, I like to hear the birds. I like to, to feel the warmth, uh, the sun coming through, and just watching nature begin to wake up to something brand new. Um, and of course, in reality, here we are, and for me, it's Charlotte, North Carolina, facing a global pandemic that has sent all of us into a tailspin. Uh, normally on a Friday morning at six o'clock, I would be over at the Yoga One Yoga Studio uh, in Dilworth, leading a 6 a.m. power flow practice. Um, I've done that since they opened in August, nearly two years ago. I've held that class and the 6 a.m. on Tuesday morning, um, as well as 8 a.m. on Saturday at Central. So my usual routine, that was my usual routine, Tuesday and Friday and Saturday, um, has been disrupted in a way that I really didn't expect, certainly didn't expect it at the beginning of this year. Since I've practiced yoga and the um, themes and techniques of inquiry, meditation, and then of course the physical asana practice, it's offered me a level of opening to a world that I thought I knew and I didn't know. So for instance, like a daily meditation practice, um, staying true as much as I can to what's actually going on in the present moment. It's given me access to a lot less stress, um, a lot less worry, a lot less anxiety. Um, and physically, I've lost weight, I've got in shape, I feel better about things, because I'm not so obsessed about a place, a time, a thing or a person. Interestingly enough, uh, as I'm downstairs drinking tea this morning, I wonder, well, what what can I do? I mean, I'm sort of bored. I felt um, just sort of out of sorts. I got up at the usual time. I fed the dogs. I, you know, took a peek at the news. It's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Nothing new. But that led me to thinking, what can I do that is new? So I came up here to my office. Um, sometimes, well, usually the place where I meditate, do uh, my yoga practice. Um, and just, you know, write, um, just ponder, muse. And I came across this book, um, Being of Power, The Nine Practices to um, Ignite and Empower Your Life, written by Baron Baptiste. For those of you who know, he is the founder of the Baptiste Power Yoga Institute, and um, of which Yoga One is an affiliate. Um, I became a Yoga One certified Baptist teacher, I mean a Baptist certified teacher, sorry, um, in 2016. Um, and the practices, the books, the techniques are all pretty straightforward. Um, and this morning I thought, well, I'll just open the book random just to see what, what I stumbled upon. And lo and behold, practice number three showed up, which is get comfortable with not knowing. So what I'm clear about is everybody wants to know when this is going to end, when's life going to go back to normal, when are we going to get comfortable with this and that. Everyone's looking for that comfort zone. So no accident, because I don't believe there are any, I turned and I opened the book at random, obviously in this chapter, in this uh, practice number three, and page 49, halfway down the page, there's a section called, Who Are You? Um, when I did my um, Yoga One teacher training in 2013, there was an exercise about who are you? Um, who would I be if I wasn't a man? Who would I be if I didn't own dogs? Who would I be if I uh, didn't own a house? And it's pretty disconcerting when you begin to pull back your life and look at, well, who are you really? And if you don't know who you are, then what have you been doing? And what are you doing that makes a difference? So with that said, I would like to read an excerpt from this, because I think for some of you who are questioning, you know, what in the world is this? It's an opportunity to peel back 
all of this frothy craziness and um, come to a sense of what is this all about? And if you're able to get to a bookstore or on Amazon or somewhere, this is amazing. The Being a Power, yes, it has uh, Baron's experiences with yoga students, but it can apply to anything you want to do on or off the mat. All right, so here goes. Who are you? You know who you are, right? But think about it for a moment. Do you really? Consider that you don't know everything that's available to you to know about who you are. That's good news because it puts you on the pathway of discovery. Whether you're conscious of it or not, you most likely cling to your sense of who you are. There's a good chance that you identify with the accomplishments and achievements that it has brought you. You're not just a lawyer, a mum, a student or whatever. Yes, they may be accurate labels to describe roles that you play, but they don't answer the question, who are you? Those are layers of, not us, that obscure who we really are underneath. We don't actually figure out who we are. That's just another quest for finite answers. We get to it by giving up the not us. We start peeling back the onion layer by layer. Letting go of layers of adopted identity. All the people pleasing, the roles we've taken on to make sure we look good and the scripts we've been using. We begin to see the areas where we've adopted or inherited those ideas about who we should and shouldn't be in order to fit in and adapt with the environment. This is an inquiry about giving up the false sense of self, which has been in the driver's seat all of our lives, and identifying what's most important to us and giving in alignment with what's in our hearts. Giving up the not us is the process and the path and all starts with accepting that we may not know really who we are just yet. When we shed the layer of who we've been pretending to be, we don't know who the new us is yet. Standing in the new exposed space without the security of what we believed to be true about ourselves can be extremely uncomfortable. Often, our first instinct is to run back to the safety of our own old ways. And then Baron goes on to talk about an experience he had with a student. I'll never forget this story that a student named Taylor shared. Taylor made some mistakes when he was in the, his early 20s, and as a result served three years in federal prison. On the day he was released, he stood outside the prison door, terrified to walk a hundred yards to the fence that stood between him and the outside world. He knew there was a new life waiting for him on the other side, but emotionally all he wanted to do was turn around and go back to the comfort of the reality he'd known for a good part of his young life. Imagine choosing the hell of prison over freedom to create your life. It's not it's something a lot of us do, even when we aren't, or even when there aren't any iron bars. Taylor didn't know what was on the other side for him. Standing there in that yard, he was right on the edge between the comfort zone and the realm of pure possibility. Every time we peel back a layer, we stand at the same edge. The right question is not, will I survive if I step out of my comfort zone? but rather, will I survive my comfort zone? Transformation happens right in those moments when rather than running back to our self-created prisons, we embrace the unknown and ask ourselves, what's available to me from here? Um, I don't know what's available for you. I don't know what's available for me. I do know that as I pay attention and observe my own feelings um, of not feeling imprisoned, but also feeling very empowered, empowered that 
Yes, this is certainly going to be a new reality for a lot of people um, and changes are coming. It reminds me of taking a load of dirty laundry, shoving it in a washing machine, it all has to tumble around in hot water and detergent, plonking it into a dryer or hanging it on a line and allowing something to permeate and fluff so when the clothes are finished, they're clean and they're dry and they're crisp and they smell good. Um, like when you get into a freshly made bed and you put clean, lovely, clean, crisp linens on it. There's that feeling. So imagine right now, you may be going through something that is a little disconcerting, um, panic driven, um, and you may hear the comfort rumblings of ning and ning and ning and ning and ning, all of that going on. My nugget for you is to stop when you know it's happening, sit quietly, find a place in nature. And when I say find a place in nature, dirt is nurturing the soil, water is nurturing a lake, a pond, a stream, a swimming pool, a bathtub, hello right in your house, uh, a shower right in your house, um, elements of wood, a tree, trees, uh, a natural wooden, anything of nature, anything you can feel that at one point became something living. Um, the, the backside of nature comes nurture, very similar words, that means nurturing the soul peeling back all of the stuff you've told yourself, all of the things you believed, and getting into the nurturing side of you, um, what you want to have happen. All right, this has gone on for 12 minutes. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and connecting with you. I am going to work out how to set up my um, downstairs living room to do a self-practice and I might record that for you to follow along. Anyway, have a great Friday. I look forward to connecting with you possibly again tomorrow. All right, take it easy. I love you. Bye.